Hello and welcome back while I finish this table topper from Open Gate Quilts. It was their January subscription box large project called Heading North. It's all these flying geese blocks and my strategy here was to outline every single of the geese and then do like a shadow goose behind it. I noticed that in this pattern they never stack. They're all scattered throughout. The placement was very strategic, but they never did um, stack on top. So I had room to do that. So I went ahead. I have a beige ore fill thread in this. Like my machine was just working really well with that thread at this time. And I'm just going through and it blends right in. Um, even with that pink area. You know, so I've learned that if you have elements, like there's that beige element in the pink. Um, I thought this would show up a little more and that I had wanted it to show up a little bit, but it just blended right in. So you can see me doing these motions, but you can't <laughs> see the quilting. <laughs> so hopefully you don't mind too much. I'm using this straight edge from Angela Walters called, I think, Slim. I'm on my handy quilter Capri sit down machine. And I do have a ruler foot on my machine. That's super important that you have your ruler foot. And I'm in manual mode. Uh, stitch regulation hasn't been working too great on this machine, but I'm in a Facebook group. We're all working on it <laughs> to figure it out. So after I got all those geese outlined, um, I have my handy quilter paddles helps me get a grip on my project. And I'm just doing a stippling throughout the rest of the quilt. I'm just going section by section avoiding that other goose material that I outlined. So I'm avoiding the teal, avoiding what I already quilted for those triangles to help them pop a little bit. Since the thread was just blending so well, I was really trying to get a dense stipple in this and I was not successful. <laughs> Maybe if I had used a thicker batting, this is a 80-20 blend. That's pretty much my go-to batting and my fabric was starched. It wasn't pre-washed because it was part of a kit and it's pretty flat. And so the quilting is going to be pretty flat. So I'm just like, sometimes I'm practicing little swirls. Sometimes it's a meander. And I just move on through each section. I mean, it's not too adventurous and just relaxing. I like the sound of my machine and get to practice some of those curved pieces. Now that I got the whole center of the quilt, you see that I already based it around the entire perimeter of the quilt. And then I went through and I stitched the center, worked my way out, and now I'm working some of that fullness. And I, I start with this Taj ruler also from Angela Walters. And I started to veer off and get a little sloppy with it. I just couldn't control this ruler very well. Uh, and that, that's a me problem. I think I also, yeah, I looked at the wrong reference point here and they started to become <laughs> like different heights. So then I just ditched it. You see that I <laughs> turned off my camera, reassessed, and now I'm just winging it. Um, they're kind of wavy lines. It looks very organic. <laughs> and I have the points not even on the same, um, like they're at the same height, but they're next to each other. So I thought that was kind of cool. This table runner reminds me more of Autumn and adding this kind of element to the side kind of reminded me of campfires. That's like what I was feeling or maybe some mountains. I don't know. But I was really enjoying how that was. So thinking about campfires, then I started doing these elongated kind of just wiggly lines. And that sort of looks like fire to me. So the campfire fire. So now I've got my like sticks and my fire <laughs> and I just move along the side of the quilt and have fun with this. Um, the I had the backing that came with the kit and it was a really tight fit. You can see me like right on the edge. So I couldn't do this on the long arm that I have. I'm trying to practice with it more. My comfort zone is still on the sit down machine. So I mean that's the one big advantage for the sit down machines and quilting on your domestic is that you can have your backing just like one inch longer, <laughs> wider than your project. And this was just fun stitching. Still in manual mode. I can get right up to that needle plate 
and it felt like it needed just a little bit more so I'm doing just a line down and then I'm doing a pebble so it's stitched down and then one two looks like I went for just two pebble lines stacked on top of each other that way if it wasn't perfect it still has that organic feel for it and maybe this is like the marshmallow <laughs> being stuck into the campfire <laughs> maybe that was the inspiration I took away from this and like you see that fabric that has little anchors so maybe I'm by the beach campfire I don't know it's the, like it's a quilt series I want to do where I just do like inspired organic quilting and this would be I guess one where I'm telling a story that's made up in my head <laughs> and so I'm done with all that and uh, so I move this forward and I find <laughs> I stitched the the backing <laughs> to the back. It folded under on the long side. So this this backing was a lot longer than it was wide. And I lost control of that. I had um everything basted down and then when I was rotating and shifting around, I sewed that down. <laughs> so so like one idea that I had was to just um, release it from the, the side and I could flip it over and make a hanging sleeve and then just like cover it like that. It was a little short to do that. If, I, if it was even longer, I think I would have gone this route and just like covered it up and folded it that way and then like hand stitched the seam in place. I mean, so that, that would have worked. Um, and it was tempting, but I really had to just take it out. So I trimmed with my scissors really close to the line and then it just pulls out. And since this is in manual mode for my quilting machine, the tension is set to be at like the regular thickness. So by pulling this out, I'm not messing up my stitches. They're actually improving a little bit. I have these circles. I have to work a little bit more to get those out. I think that for some of them I even just left it for a while and then I washed the table runner and then they were even more frayed and easier to, to pick out that fabric from the center. So you just uh, be careful what it happens to all of us. And so I wanted to show like if you have a large bobbin with that you were quilting with and you can still piece with it with overfill, I'm just showing that you can refill your bobbins to smaller bobbins. And get another use of it because I know we don't know what to do with those sometimes. And so here is the finished quilt in the light next to a window so that you can see it a little bit better. You can see all my squiggly lines. You can see like the swirls a lot better. So it shows up at the right angle and it, it's not so bad. I think this is a really pretty, I just that color, like I have a teal thread. And you can see it on the back but it just was a perfect match to these borders. And that helps a lot. If you've got matching thread, you can be as brave as you want with quilting. It takes some chances. <laughs> Here I wanna show you the washed quilt. So we used it for about a month. My son spilled ketchup on it. This is washed. It is so crinkled up with that 80-20 batting. And even though I starched the fabric, which shrinks it a little bit, I still have a lot of this crinkle and it just eats up all that quilting. So I just, I want this to be a reminder. Don't take it so seriously. Take some risks, have fun, and your end project's going to be beautiful regardless. <laughs>